Are you drooling each time you see mouth-watering photos of drizzling honey? Do you want to learn how to take your food photography to the next level, mastering these kind of action shots? In this episode, I'll teach you how to nail movement without wasting too much honey. Hi, my name is Solly. Welcome to my studio. If you're eager to nail movements in your frame, then this episode is for you. We will be looking into how to capture action in food photography and I'll also be guiding you step by step and also share tips on what to think of when setting up the scene. Action shots may look complicated, but they are not. You just need to master a few things. First of all, there is no universal camera setting. Everything depends on the available light and what kind of ingredients you will be capturing. We can't control the speed of the ingredients in the movement that we photograph. But by preparing our scene, understanding where to put the focus point and what shutter speed to use, you'll no longer have to capture hundreds of photos to nail it. We can control the focus point by first setting our lens to manual focus mode. This is important as when you press the shutter, you don't want the focus point to move to a different place in the scene. You need to plan ahead where in the scene you'll have the movement and set the focus there. As you set the focus manually and ahead of the actual movement, you can't really focus on the ingredients movement that you will be shooting. Instead, you have to use something else. In the following examples, I've used a pair of sushi sticks that I made standing upward with the help of a clamp. I set the focus on the sticks, remove them, and then make sure to put the movement of the ingredients on that spot. The shutter speed has to be adjusted according to how fast or slow the movement is, how much light there is in the scene, and how sharp you want the movement to be captured. The longer speed, the blurry the movement will be, and the faster speed, the sharper it will be. So that's totally up to the result you want to achieve. If you have an assistant that will create the movement in the scene, you can skip this part. But if you will be creating the movement, then I highly advise you to use a remote shutter with or without cable, depending on how far from the camera the scene is. Or if you can use your mobile as a remote shutter, that's also an alternative. I'm using a Nikon Z6 and with their application Snapbridge that I have downloaded on my phone, I can do remote photography. So I can actually see the scene and activate the shutter on the camera through my phone. Last but not least, the color of your background is important for the movement of the ingredient to be as visible as possible in the image. If you will be dusting something white like sugar, flour, etc., then you need to avoid white and very bright backgrounds. You should opt for very dark colors instead. If you're using honey, both white and dark colors would work. You just need to avoid colors that match the color of the honey. That's a small but important detail. So enough with theory and let's move on to the fun part. We'll begin with icing sugar. First, I use the sushi sticks to set the focus and I remove them from the scene, but I left them on the same line so I could use it as a guideline when I was dusting the sugar. This step is important if you want to get your dusting sugar in focus. Next step is to choose the shutter speed. This is a tricky part as the speed of the dusting sugar can vary between the shots. Let's have a look on how different shutter speeds can affect the motion. This photo is taken without flash, just ambient light, so I had to increase the ISO to 250 and I used a shutter speed of 0.8 seconds. This gives us a motion trail of the sugar. We can try to increase the speed a bit to uh, 10 of a second and you can see that we still have motion trails. If you want to capture the pieces of the dusting sugar, we need to increase the shutter speed even more. This is the result I wanted to achieve, so I proceeded bringing the cookies into the scene and this is the final image. 
I highly advise you to experiment first without any cake or cookies because it's much more difficult to remove the sugar from the cake than if you would simply use a paper to make your testing in order to get the settings right. If you don't have any artificial light, don't worry. You simply have to increase the ISO and also open the aperture to get more light to the sensor. For Honey, it works the same. You just need to pay attention to the shutter speed. Honey is liquid. However, it's thick, so it's not drizzling very fast if you would compare it to milk, for example, that is more liquid. To capture milk, you would need to use a faster shutter speed, but with honey, around 200 of a second is perfectly fine. If I want the drizzling honey to be the main subject in my image, it has to be sharp. Just as the previous shots, I set the focus manually. I had planned to drizzle the honey into the center of the jar, so I kept the lid on. I put the sushi sticks in the middle of the jar and set the focus manually. Then I removed the lid and drizzled the honey to the center of the jar. As you can see, it worked perfectly. But if you move the honey dipper outside of the focus area, the drizzle will no longer be in focus, like you can see here. So make sure to set your focus correctly before shooting and keep the drizzling honey where you have set the focus. Once you feel confident with how to set the camera for these type of shots, you can be creative and make swirls like this with the honey. Here you have to increase the shutter speed and also move the honey dipper pretty fast forward and backward while the honey is dripping to catch the swirl. Now it's your time to experiment at home and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment to the video below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.